Hello everyone, Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts. Welcome back to my channel. Today, Scrappy Tales is sponsoring and participating in a birthday celebration hop put together by Debbie J's Corner and Neha from Crescent Creations. I'll talk a little bit about the hop later on, but basically all of the cards on the hop today are birthday themed. Mine is going to be a birthday Christmas card because why not? And I'm going to be using some Scrappy Tail products here. I have the Nutcracker Ballet. I went ahead and stamped and colored all of the images from the stamp set and die cut them with their coordinating dies. I did color them with my Copic markers and I did use an alcohol friendly ink to stamp my images. I'm going to be using the A7 theater cover plate here. I'm going to be using the spotlight, the theater curtains, and that little ballerina included in the set. I'm going to be using the A7 music note cover plate, and I'll be using the cover plate itself for that. And then I am using the um, Scrappy Tales pop-up shadow box book. I went ahead and die cut all of the pieces for the book, including two of the covers. I cut one for the front and back of my book and then four of the large accordion pieces that are included in the die set. These are the only pieces you need to construct the book. The rest of the dies included are just decorative elements and I will not be using them today. I just want the book. All right, so you can see I cut my base pieces from cream cardstock and I'm going to trim them down a little bit. Um, I want a, a card that's a little bit smaller than an A7 just because I want my cover plate to completely cover the front of my book. So I have my accordions here. I'm going to cut two of them down to six and a half, and then the other two I'm going to cut down to four and a half. And I'm cutting on the long end of each of these, so all of them are going to be five inches wide. I'm also going to cut down my front and back cover to six and three quarters. So basically my pages are a quarter of an inch smaller than my actual front and back cover. Um, so it's gonna fit better inside and it'll be easier to line them up. And it also allows me to use that A7 cover plate that I just showed. So you can keep the accordions this five by seven size if you want. Um, but I have, after making a couple of these books, found that I actually kind of prefer when the pages are a little bit smaller so that it's easier to line up inside the book. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fold my accordions, basically folding up, flipping around, folding up, flipping around until I get to the very end. I'm gonna do that with all four pieces. I like to fold all of my score lines upwards to kind of reinforce them, to train them before I go in and, the, and start the accordion fold. I do have a full video tutorial on how this book is made on my YouTube channel. If you're curious to see a more comprehensive video that's much slower than this one, um, I will have a video link listed down below in the description box. So I did speed up this video quite a bit because I know this is a hop with a lot of participants, so I didn't want this video to be super long so that hopefully you can get through everyone's video. I think I'm the last one anyway, but I still didn't want this to be like a 30 minute video. I think it's already like 17 minutes or so. But anyway, um, to attach these pages together or these accordions, um, you basically just line up the corners and you hinge the mountains and valleys together. So I kind of showed you how to do it there, but I'll show you how to do it again. So I have some double-sided tape here that I'm cutting down into, I would say, half-inch squares. You're going to want a couple of these on hand as you build this. It'll just make your life easier. So I have them all stacked on my finger here. And I'm taking a small accordion and then the longer one. I am intertwining those mountains and valleys together on the corners. And then you should be able to lift up each of the tabs and add your little uh, square of tape or glue dot, whatever you want to use, and close those corners. So just fold them back over themselves. So one would be the shorter end, the other tab would be on the long end. It doesn't matter which one you glue down first. As long as you get two glue squares, that will ensure that everything kind of stays in place. I'm going to do it to the other side as well, just to make sure it's extra secure. I am using half inch squares because it allows 
just the corners to glue down and the rest of the pieces are open and um, they're not as tight if that makes sense so it looks more like a page like book pages so I'm going to do that with the other two pieces so I have my shorter piece that I'm going to add to the other end of the long one I shimmied them together you're going to want to try to make them as tight as possible and to do that you just push against each of the two pieces until they're nice and snug then you're going to go ahead and add your squares of tape to each side just in the corners on those two open tabs to completely close them off you're going to want to make sure that your peaks are facing upwards and those two tabs are facing down before you intertwine your two pieces together but once you make one of these they're super simple to put together and it creates a little shadow box for inside your book and it also creates the outer pages of your book it's a really cool effect and because this frame is made completely out of accordion folds it will actually fold flat and fit in an envelope um, I am pulling apart my accordion a little bit to make it more dimensional I plan on delivering this card in a box that I'll show at the end of the video uh, but these will fold down and fit in an envelope if you want to hand deliver them if you're mailing them I probably would still suggest adding them inside a bubble mailer because they are pretty dimensional but um, they're really cool cards so I'm going to add this frame inside my book you can see I went ahead and glued my front and back cover together just uh, gluing it on the spine there and then once that is adhered I'm going to add some double-sided tape and some liquid glue to one side of my frame I do like to add liquid glue in case I have to shift this around and line it up inside my book but because I trim those accordion pieces down it does make it easier to line it up inside the book but you can make the pages line up edge to edge with the book so having the liquid glue just allows you to move it around for a little bit until you get it right once that is adhered I can then start to decorate the front cover of my book so here I have my a7 music note cover plate that I die cut from red cardstock and I added navy blue behind it I don't end up loving this color combo especially with the pattern paper I wanted to use so you're gonna see at the end I end up changing it but at the time I thought I would keep going and see how it turns out so I'm going to paper piece my ballerinas here so I die cut each of them once from cream cardstock and once from navy and then my middle ballerina um, I die cut a gold dress for her I wanted her to stand out so she's supposed to be like the sugar plum fairy of the Nutcracker Ballet so I thought she would be perfect on the front cover with these book cards I tend to be a little more simplistic on the front cover and I kind of go all out on the inside of the books so these little ballerinas were super easy and simple to paper piece I added a vellum spotlight behind my music note cover plate frame you can see that I have some strips of white cardstock layered behind it to pop it up a little bit I just used scrap cardstock and created some white frames so that it would be more dimensional then I added my pattern paper once that frame was adhered and then my ballerinas I'm going to position as a trio I'll glue my dark blue ones to the back and then that gold one is going to go in the middle I love that that spotlight tones down the pattern paper behind them and helps them stand out more plus I think it looks like a real spotlight I love how that turned out I'm going to glue down my middle ballerina I positioned her a little bit lower down I thought that looked visually nice and then I'm going to work on the sentiment so this is a happy birthday sentiment from the scrappy tales fairy sentiments stamp set there's a lot of uh, go-to sentiments in that set that you can combine with some scripty words in this case I just wanted the plain old happy birthday super simple I'm going to stamp it with versifying onyx black ink clear heat emboss it and trim it out with my scissors creating a banner shape and I'll add this above my little ballerinas so as I decorate the front cover I want to talk a little bit about the hop I think I'm the last one so I don't want to go through the whole spiel again I'm sure you guys heard it a couple times so basically leave your comments on as many videos as you can the more you comment the more opportunities to win there's 10 generous sponsors on this hop so there's a 
couple opportunities to win, which is awesome. And Scrappy Tails is a sponsor, yay! <laughs> I was very honored when Deborah asked me to not only sponsor this hop, but to also participate. It really means a lot, so I gladly decided to join as well as sponsor a $25 gift card. So hopefully you find some new YouTubers, some new creators, and if you are new to the Scrappy Tales channel, please feel free to subscribe to my channel if you are someone that loves making cards, especially pop-up cards. That's what I tend to feature a lot on my channel. I also love clearly to die cut and paper piece, which is what I'm doing here. I have my Theater A7 cover plate that I die cut from red cardstock, and I'm just adding some darker red behind the cutouts. I will also add some gold tassels that are included in the die set. And I love this particular die because it does look like a theater stage, but it can also just be a regular curtain if you want to create a window scene with it. And I'll definitely try to feature that in an upcoming video where I use it more as like a curtain looking outdoors or looking indoors. I think that's another great way to use this set. So I'm going to create the stage for my little scene here. I have the same plaid pattern paper I used on the front. I added a strip of brown cardstock. That was hard to say. <laughs> um, it came out, but it came out a little bit rough. I added that brown strip so that it kind of looked like maybe the floor of the stage. I also added a brown strip to the bottom there. It looks like I didn't cover it completely, but I actually did. The little bit of cream you're seeing is the pages of the book that's peeking through. It's just the angle on my camera. If you look at this card head on, you'll see that it's completely covered by the brown. Anyway, um, I have the large tree image from the Nutcracker Ballet 6x8 stamp set. I added double mounted foam tape behind that. I thought about using another uh, vellum spotlight, but I just knew there was going to be so many images inside that there was no point in really adding that. It was going to be completely covered. So now I have my ballerina couple that I'm going to add right in front of the tree. I am going to pop them up with a single layer of foam tape so that they stand out a bit more. I'm going to glue that grandfather clock directly onto the shadow box wall just with regular glue. And then the rest of the images I'm tucking inside the pages of the book at different levels. So some of them are further back and some are further forward and it creates a really cool sense of depth and adds to that shadow box look. The foam tape is also allowing me to add more dimension to these images and I just love creating shadow box scenes. I love the different 3D elements inside. They're just a lot of fun to create. So here I have all of my images. I'm gluing them with art glitter glue. You can see the Mouse King. I am tucking in between the right and the bottom pages. For this rocking horse, I added the glue just to the bottom part of it and glued him a little bit higher up than the mouse. And then I have my Nutcracker and Ballerina. So I wanted the Nutcracker right in the front so he definitely stands out. But this Ballerina, I wanted her to be a little bit taller. I didn't want her to go all the way to the bottom of the page. So what I do is I add a clear acrylic stick behind images that I want to be more in the center or further higher up, whatever. Um, so that's what I did there. You can use acetate or cardstock instead. You don't end up seeing it anyway because it is going to get glued behind the pages of the book but this just adds a little bit of height to your images. So the Nutcracker, I added some glue behind his boots or in front of his boots and glued him behind the very front row of the book page. So he's still very much in the forefront of this scene. And then on that brown strip, I'm going to add a, a few little presents. I'll go ahead and also glue down the curtain. You can cut the curtain in half and add them inside the shadow box if you want that frame to show all the way around but in this case I kind of liked how it looked covering the frame entirely and then here all I have are my little presents all of these images are included in the Nutcracker Ballet 6x8 stamp set there are so many images to create beautiful scenes with like I said I had two ballerinas left over and this little soldier boy and a violin that I decided to add to the left inner uh, cover page here. 
I'm just adding some more scrap pieces of cardstock, another brown strip. I kind of liked the little bit of brown included on the right, so I carried it over to the left. And I'll use some leftover stamped die cut images to decorate it. I'm also going to use some ovals that I cut from another Scrappy Tales dies. All the products I will have linked down below. And they're all designed and illustrated by me. So that little Nutcracker Ballet stamp, I did completely draw by hand. And I had yet to use this stamp until now. And I really enjoyed coloring up all of those little images with my Copic markers. I went with a whole rainbow of colors. You can see there's pink, orange, purple, red, green, blue. I used almost every color you can think of, but it still looks like a cohesive scene. I love all the bright colors. The front is a little more traditional. Here is the oval set that I used, um, just so there was an area to write a message inside. I also used that violin in the Soldier Boy or Soldier Nutcracker thing. I don't know what they're called. I had one leftover ballerina, so I added that to the back of the card. And I'm also going to trim off any overhang that you can see through the front of the card. And that's going to finish off my A7 Shadow Box book card. So I did create a coordinating box. You can see that I changed the music note cover plate. I added gold instead of the blue behind the music notes. I think it just looks a little more festive. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I will have the first person on the hop linked down below. Thank you all for sticking around for this pretty long video. I will have a box tutorial for these book cards soon. I just, you know, I'm running out of time, guys. I wanted this to be a quicker video, and it's already 18 minutes or 17 minutes long. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I will have everything listed in the video description, and I will see you next time. Bye!